everyone, welcome to another episode. I have a special guest here with me today. She'll be introduce introducing herself to you shortly. But as you all know, my name is Gloria Lamide. I am an empowerment coach. I coach women. I help women to understand who they are in Christ Jesus. Everything I do is about inspiring women, you know, encouraging them and making sure they understand that whatever they are going through, they can always overcome it. So I share stories, other women's stories and things, because if these women can overcome, then you can as well. So let's meet Donna. Can you introduce yourself to everyone, please? Hi, I'm Donna. Um, I am an author, a photographer, an artist. Um, I've been a widow for 23 years next April or this coming April. Um, I just, it's, I'm just full of inspiration and hope um, to help encourage women as well to uh, um, become the best that they can be that God ordained for them. Um, and I'm glad to be here. Oh, it's so nice to have you here. And where do you, where do you live? Where are you um, speaking I'm from? in Illinois, in the United States. Okay. I'm coming from Chicago area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's awesome what technology can do, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in the UK. I live in Kent, you know, okay. and I'm speaking with you right now. What time is it over there? It is noon. Noon. It's just yeah. gone past it's, um, several minutes after 6 p.m. here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's lunchtime for me, dinner time for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about your books. How many books have you authored so far? This is my first book. Um, I, uh, it's been a work in progress because it's the story of my life. Um, some struggles and many deaths that I've gone through. Um, with my husband dying 23 years ago from a drunk driver, um, hmm. that really inspired me to um, really help people overcome because grief is uh, such a personal, um, such a personal feeling. Such a, it can be a struggle. A lot of people get stuck in grief. Um, but before he passed away, we had two stillborn babies and that we buried. And um, through that, my husband watched my face um, and he wasn't sure how or why um, I could get through such difficulties. Mm. And so by the time when he died, um, I just had such a peace about it, not to say that it was easy because it was not easy because I had three children to raise. Um, but the steps were moment by moment until they became day by day. Then it became week by week. And so through that process, I just felt like I was really learning how to become strong Mm -hmm. and to gain strength where I never imagined that I would be able to raise three sons by myself. On your own, yes. Um, go back to school at 40 years old. Yeah, mm. and I was an A student, and I wasn't an A student when I was in school as a child. <laughs> um, and so to do all those things, it wasn't easy. Um, I mm -hmm. don't want to make it sound like it was easy. Mm -hmm. But through all of that, I just felt like there was going to be a book one day Mm -hmm. that I would write. Mm -hmm. And three years ago, I just felt like, okay, this was the time to write the book, to encourage people, to inspire people, mostly women. It, it's really geared more toward the woman women. because I'm a woman doing all of this. Um, and um, we've got so much to get. Each person has so much to give. So through the book, through... Um, through the steps of 10 months of writing the manuscript, mm -hmm. um, I will say I, I didn't want to get as raw and intimate with the details 
of what I went through because it's so personal. It is, yeah. And it wasn't easy. Yeah. I will say when I wrote, as I wrote it, I would write for maybe two weeks and be doing well. And then I would write the details of a situation and it would exhaust me. And I would uh, have to take a two week break mm. um, because it was like reliving it again. So, um, but through the strength of God, it just, you know, I got through it and did it. Mm. And um, the people that are reading it, my beta readers, um, even those who aren't believers in mm-hmm. God, just regular people, they, everyone has said it's so encouraging and they feel like they can conquer something. And mm-hmm. that was my goal. That was yeah. my purpose of writing this book so that people can feel inspired and mm-hmm. encouraged. Yes. Wow. What's the book called? It's Forever Hope. Forever Hope. Mm-hmm. Yes. And is it available um, on Amazon and other bookstores? It's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the bookstores. Mm. Okay. Wow, you've been through a lot. Yeah. Yes. So when you had the stillbirths, yes. were you a Christian at that point? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I, so how yeah, did that I, make you feel as a Christian, someone who prays a lot and everything? Yeah. What feelings did you have to deal with at that point? And you had two, um, right? Well, and it's two interesting. Times. I had two, yeah. It was two different situations, um, and they were both very different. Mm. The, our first child, um, he, as we were in the hospital, um, and it was the first child, so Pregnancies are always mm. different, you know, uh, pro- seems to be prolonged the first time because it's the first baby. So yes. we're late, we're sitting in the hospital room, yeah, and it's taking forever and nothing's moving along. And I was in a room and I just felt like something was wrong, mm. but I didn't know, I wasn't sure because I didn't know what to expect. It was my first pregnancy. And as we're sitting there. My husband finally looked at me and he said, I feel like something's wrong. Are the monitors working? And the monitors were like behind me. So I couldn't see them. And this was 37 years ago. So Hmm. technology was different back then. Yeah. And so I said, you know, I said, I think something's wrong too. And so I, I buzzed the nurse they didn't answer. They didn't come. They didn't whatever. And it felt like forever. It was probably five minutes that went by maybe ish. Mm. Um, and finally my husband went down to the nurse's station and said, we think something's wrong. And it took the nurse, like, you know, she did one of these things like, mm, you know, really, and came down. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, we were intruding on their space. It was, that's what my contractions weren't real. They are meant to be helping. Exactly. That's exactly that's what my mind was saying. So I was yeah. a little mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely. Just, you know, it yeah was totally inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, but and when she came in, I could see she looked at the monitor and something was off mm. in her face. Yeah. And so she kind of came over like, I'm going to be right back. Let me go get the intern. And so, cause my doctor was delivering a baby. So he comes in, came around, patted me on the, on the knee. And he's like, okay, um, we're going to take you down to the delivery room. And so I'm like, okay. And I don't know what to ask because I've never mm. had a baby before. And I don't yeah. know what to expect, but something was off. So as we, we did, they did the ultrasound and they could see the umbilical cord was around his neck oh, and no. he had already passed away. Oh, dear. Yeah. So, you know, it was, I, I want to say in my flesh, in my, what I know is that um, really if they would have monitored me better, yeah. The baby could have, we could have done a C-section or something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I start wondering, you know, what, why and what and how come. And so as we, we, it was a long delivery and we didn't do a C-section. We wanted to avoid that. And uh, mm-hmm. I delivered the baby. And so when they bought, they, the nurse asked me if I wanted to hold the baby. And I'm like, of course, oh, yeah. I could do, you know, because 
I knew enough that even at 21, I was 21 when we had 21, so young. And I knew enough. To, yeah, so young. Yeah. And God just gave, gave me such peace and such wisdom that I, I pressed into him. Right. And I knew, yeah, I knew enough to know that I needed to hold the baby and see the baby Mm -hmm. because I think my mind would have played with me, you know, mm -hmm. and I could have gone into, into depression or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they brought the baby to me and it was, it was tough because he was perfect. Mm -hmm. he, there was oh. nothing wrong with him. And it, it, it was, you know, again, rationalizing in my mind. It was like in my mind, I'm asking God. Okay. So my husband's sitting next to me watching me and, we don't know what to say. We don't know how to react. Hmm. But in my mind, I said, um, God, I don't understand this. I don't know why you would allow this to happen. Hmm. But I give, I surrender my life fully to you wow. to make sense of this. And I'm trusting wow. Wow. And I can look back now and I was still, I mean, I, I came to know Christ when I was 11 mm -hmm. um, and I, and I didn't grow up in a Christian home. So let me premise that mm -hmm. we could not talk about Christianity in our home. Oh, right. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I had friends that went to church and they took me or they brought me to church. Mm -hmm. So that was another difficulty. So as an adult, um, I was just starting to come into that real relationship and freedom mm -hmm. in, in God and all of that. So it was huge. I will just say it was only by the grace of God that I was mature enough and had the wisdom to lean into God and say, I don't understand this, but I surrender my life to you fully. Wow. So with it was the process. Um, then we, we had the funeral for the baby and everything. And my husband was asking a lot. We were from di different denominations. Uh -huh. So he didn't understand it. He didn't get it. Um, because he felt like the baby died before it could be christened. Yeah. Oh. And he didn't understand how I was confident that the baby would go to heaven. Mm. So we had a lot of those discussions and a lot and, to talk about. Yeah. A lot to talk about. Mm. And it, it's, you're struggling because you're grieving, you know, and crying about this. So, um, then we had on, so the process was slow. It was sad. It was empty mm. to go home to a nursery that was empty. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, tough. you've had time tough. to prepare, you know, your baby's room and all that. And then yeah. to go home without a baby, that must have right. been really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I will say I had to keep the door shut for quite oh. some time. You know, it was very hard to look at the cute little, you know, the crib and all of that that we had mm. set up. I, I don't remember how long but I would say it was probably a few months that I had just kept the door shut right. um, and only going in there if I needed to get something specific mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like we had a little bit of storage in the closet in there but it was it was tough that part yeah. was very hard because it was the reality but we're, we couldn't feel it you know um, in my heart I knew God was in control but um, this mama's heart yeah. was having a hard time yeah, yeah. the love of yeah. a mom yeah. yeah so did that yeah. play on your mental health in any way um i i would say just in the sadness it was more of a heart pain right um and a lot of questions to god because i knew god was the only one that could answer it and i knew um i didn't have sleepless nights mm -hmm. um but that struggle of, and I think sometimes I was waiting to hear the baby crying, you know, those kind of things, like the mind playing a little bit of trick on you, like, yeah. oh, I should go, oh, no, okay, you know, and then in those moments, you just have to go, okay, God, just help me, you know, mm -hmm. so I will say through that process, um, I think I went through normal, um, um, Grieving. What's the word I'm looking the for? Um, grieving, grieving, and the um, 
uh, oh, <laughs> my mind just went blank. Um, the, like the um, not Post wanting natal. to believe it really happened. Oh, right, right, denial, right. Like denial. Denial, yeah. yeah. In my mind, I think I had a little bit of that where, um, you know, I just, sometimes I would feel like, okay, he should be there, mm. but he's not. So those, the mind plays tricks, you know, yeah. and especially I, I babysat for my stepbrothers and sisters. So I knew what a baby did. You know, oh, it's been three hours. The baby should be up from a nap. So sometimes I would have that, um, like, oh, I should go check on the baby and uh, then realize. So in the mental health aspect, I would just say the mind would play tricks on me a little bit. But mm. as far as depression or anything like that, I think God just really helped me through it all. Mm. Mm. Because I said, God, when we left the hot before we left the hospital, I said, I, I need your help with this. Because I don't understand it, you know. It's difficult so, to understand yeah. that. It is, yeah. So difficult. But I trusted him fully. Mm. Now, versus the second baby, he was a twin. And um, they were about a month early. And the doctors initially had said that both babies would die because they were that early. But um, Michael, the one that living um he was much he was he was about a pound and a half bigger and he had all his organs developed right. so he had to stay in the hospital for a couple of weeks for his lungs to get developed mm -hmm. so he did really good but the other baby who we named mark um didn't have a, his brain was not developed his, right. his organs were not developed so in that sense, um, I think for me, that one was a little harder because um, I was so looking forward to having twins. Oh, yeah. And the, yeah, I, it was just, it was such an exciting time to be pregnant with twins because nobody in our families had twin, twins. Especially since you've lost one. That, you lost one before. And having lost the other. Yeah, and you thought, yeah. well, I'm having yeah. twins now. God is like, you know, giving me double for what I'd lost before. Right. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I will say with, with, with him, um, they kept him alive, um, mm -hmm. on, uh, in the incubator on like life support. Right. And, um, they said, you know, if you want to bring your family in to see him and things like that. So our parents came mm -hmm. and then we, uh, they gave me the option, but they gave the option to my husband and I to turn the switch off. Oh. And that in itself is really tough. Difficult to, yeah, to do But that. yet I knew I wanted to do it. But yeah. I didn't want to, I just felt like if I had the opportunity that I wanted, I brought this baby into the world and I wanted to see him relieved and, you know, released to heaven, you know, yeah. oh. and see, I'm, I'm even like more emotional with that yeah. one today. Yeah. Um, but because it's tough, you know, that, so I did, but I will say with that one, I was really angry with God. I, I, I questioned him a lot and I, mm. and I was honest and I said, God, I'm angry because yeah. you let this happen once mm -hmm. and then to have it happen again, again. I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I went through um, a period, you know, probably for a couple of years where I just, I really questioned. So in the mental process of it all mm -hmm. I didn't want to accept it you know it, it was absolute like I just can't accept this and mm -hmm. I'm angry yeah and just yeah. really kind of argued a lot <laughs> yeah oh my <laughs> so wow. yeah so what helped you what process did you have to go through to help you with the anger you know did you have to go through counseling what did you do um I did yeah, I did not. I've never had luck with counseling. Oh, right. Um, yeah, I just, I've had, I, you know, I'll be honest, I've just really had um, very poor counselors <laughs> that just, they just always would say the wrong thing. And I just <laughs> didn't understand that, you know. Um, my help actually came from my, um, my spiritual moms, my my prayer warrior mothers Good. that I knew as a child. Mm -hmm. um, 
I will, in, and I say this, I tell it in the book, if it weren't for them, I'm not sure how I would have gotten through any hmm. of this. Hmm. But um, especially after Mark died, they were there. They came to my house. They helped. They brought dinners. They cleaned my house. They, were, hmm. they prayed with me. They, um, they prayed, you know, I know that they prayed when they were at home, you know, hmm. and praying for me. So I do think the power of prayer and a willing, my willing heart to know ultimately that God was in control mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that I had to, I had, I knew that I had to eventually release that anger yeah. and that those mm-hmm. questions, because mm-hmm. if I held on to it, I would go down, down a dark road and I didn't want to go there because mm-hmm. I had not only Michael to take care of, but we had one healthy baby in between those two pregnancies. Oh, right. So okay. I had two babies. Yeah. So I, I kind of overlooked, not to overlook my sweet Christopher, but we did have a healthy baby <laughs> in between those two right. pregnancies. Mm-hmm. And so I knew I had to be um, strong for them. Yeah. And my, my husband struggled a lot. Mm. So answering his questions probably helped me walk through it. I would imagine. So just really mm. relying on people, my friends and family, my friends and family, because I felt like they knew me yeah. going to the counselors. I just got from them. What I got was a lot of, um, um, book knowledge and right. there wasn't that connection. Yeah. You know? yeah. That was what I experienced. Just ticking um, the boxes. And I'm the boxes. Sure that- yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm sure that there are many wonderful counselors out there. I just never found one. So, um, you know, for me, just relying on people that knew me and knew my personality and knew uh-huh. how to envelop and knew my needs. Yes, that was really my strength. You know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I think with that said, I think that's why we need in today's world. It's sad because we're losing that tribe of family yeah. and people that surround each other so and true. I really mm-hmm. I'm such an advocate yeah because who's going to help you more than the ones that love you the ones that know you you know mm-hmm. and um even if they don't have the answers just the fact that they're there, there. And they yeah really is a big help mm-hmm. 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 wow yeah I'm just trying to get my head around everything you, you've been saying, everything you've been through. It's so much, you know? Yeah, so you were is. dealing with this on your own. And how did you deal with it as a couple? Um, quietly. <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband wasn't a good conversationalist. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was struggling with that. I mm. think the pain was more that he can handle Mm. um and it was hard for it was probably harder for him but during that time he was watching my faith deepen Mm. and um I think that's where that's where we were he was observing my actions Mm -hmm. yeah and so I'm walking forward. He saw me, you know, I was reading the Bible. I was going to church. I was just praying what I could pray. And sometimes, sometimes when you pray, it can just be two words. You know, it doesn't have to be this long prayer. It mm-hmm. just is God help me or, yeah. you know, Oh God, you know, and that's sometimes all you need to say. Mm. And he was watching that. So, um, he never said much at all, which mm. probably was difficult in in uh, in the scheme of it all. Yeah. Um, but somehow we did pro- we processed it it that way, and we loved each other. But he just wasn't a good communicator that way. <laughs> and well, he went through it, it, it okay. Was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't need counseling yeah. either. Did he go for counseling? No, no. no. Oh, right. Okay. No, he wasn't, you know, he was a typical man. Yeah. That didn't want counseling, didn't want somebody else. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it, again, it was leaning more on family and that love and support with family mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. he relied on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And that's so important, right? Having family, yeah. you know, having that close tribe around you and everything. It's so good. 
So yeah. I'm beginning to wonder, you know, after having gone through all that, some women will feel rejected by God and say, God, why me? Where are you yeah. in all this? You know, right. so what gave yes. you, what made you strong? What gave you that strength in faith? Um, you know, when I had those questions, I did ask, you know, why me? Haven't I gone through enough? Haven't I, you know, you know, or, or what did I do wrong? Wrong to yeah. this happen to me, you know? And um, there, there were doubts. Um, there were um, fears that came mm -hmm. in. Um, but again, I just kept going back to the Bible and I kept underlining and you know, something would stick out to me and I would just mm. say, okay, God, well, if this is what you say, then yeah. I guess I need to trust it. Mm. And mm. that, that was, all. I just kept going back to the Bible, just kept going back and, and, um, relying on him to get me through it. So the power of prayer, the power of when we lean into God, then he will lean into us. When we're sitting here and we're going, okay, I don't, you know, I'm going to do it my way or I'm going to, I'm going to fix myself. Then we, I think that's when we, that's when we get into trouble Yeah, is we kind of get stuck. We get, um, you know, we're not, we're not an island. We need, we need our, our tribe, our family, our people mm -hmm. that God puts into our circle and we need him, you know, we need him most. So that I definitely believe that that was my saving grace to get mm. through it all was mm. just having a really good church, really, um, prayer life. And then people, when I couldn't pray, people were praying for me because there were times when I couldn't pray. I, it just was like, why, why am I bothering, you know? And, and again, it's, the, it is that rejection yeah what did I do wrong and why me and I did ask those questions plenty of times but um you come back to I either have to trust God or I have to walk away from him that's my choice and so just knowing that knowing I've got to trust God even when I don't understand and that's faith that's, yeah that's knowing what that faith is trusting yeah. so true knowing that God is good irrespective yes. of what we are going through yes you know he remains yeah. good and he yes. loves us you know he doesn't he want us, us to go through all that but somehow right. we do you know yeah and yeah. leaning on leaning yeah. into god he takes us through you know yes. i always get encouraged yes. by the footprint in the sand yeah yes you know yes. so this person is being yeah. carried by jesus and yeah. he looks down and sees, he, he thinks he's seeing his own footprints. Right. Because he can only see, you know, he can't see four, two, you can't see two people walking. He can only see one person walking. Yes. Yeah. And he thinks those are his own feet. Yeah. Yeah. But then Jesus says, no, those are my feet because I'm carrying you. You know, yeah. we are in his arms. Uh, he's carrying us. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And we look down, yeah. we see his feet, you know, he's taking all the roughness of the ground and carrying us through to the other side. Because yeah. if he leaves us down, we are going to step on thorns and different things on the floor. So he's carried right. us. But when we are going yeah. through these difficult times, we think, where are you, Lord? I can't see you. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you are in my yeah. arms, you know, yeah. you are in my yeah. arms. I'm carrying you through yeah. the other side, you know. Right. So, yeah, I always right. get encouraged by yeah. that. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, when you, I mean, it's making my heart just overjoyed by that vision of him carrying us because yeah. he does. And and that's how much he loves us, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I always think of, you know, as a parent, how much I love my kids and I would do anything for them. How much more does the father love us, mm -hmm. you know? And that's where that footprints um, image comes from too. Yeah. 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 So how many children do you have now? I have, I have three sons. Three sons. Wow. Yeah. 
all yeah. grown so we all have five all together. All grown up. Yep, they're all in their thirties. Only one is married. Mm -hmm. And they're all doing, they're just, I love them. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, just love them. You know, God, God, and, and I think that's the treasure um, is that probably because I did lose the, I didn't lose them. They're in heaven, heaven. but because the other two passed away, I think there's just that overabundance of love for the other three, yes. you know, that until, and they don't have children yet. So until they have children, they're not going to understand them. But every time I see, you know, so they're in their thirties and they're men, you know, they're like, I love you so much. They're like, mom, I know. And I'm like, Dude, I got to tell you all the time. I love oh. you so much. <laughs> You're like, mom, stop. But <laughs> <laughs> I do, you know, I just, oh, they're such good guys. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's so good. So how many years were you married for? How many? Uh, we were married 15 years. 15? He was, wow. Yeah, we were together eight. So we dated for three years. Um, so we were together 18 years, but married 15. Mm -hmm. And it just was so sudden when he died and just, um, and that was, and again, that was a God moment because God brought me through and he was preparing me for that mm. all the time. Mm. And I will say um, that, so when he passed away and it was, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm grateful that it was quick. Um, he, he passed away right away and it wasn't a big accident, but it was just enough. He, we found out that my husband ended up having a brain aneurysm oh. that he was probably born with. We didn't know. Really? So when the accident, happened, yeah. So when the accident happened, the brain aneurysm just burst oh. and he died right away. Oh. So that was kind of like an, one of those like what moments when we found mm. that out but um he gave his life to the lord fully two weeks before he died which was a god thing oh my god really yeah two weeks two weeks before and he had, again he had been struggling he grew up in church but his denomination was much different mm. and he his his denomination condemned us because I wouldn't convert to that denomination. And oh. they told us, yeah, they told us that we would go to hell if I didn't convert. And I said, you're not the denomination I want to live in because God really? is a God of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they, are they meant to be Christians? It, it was, are they Christians? Yeah, well, that's, that, would, that was my other question, you know, to, you know, and I, I just walked out of that church. I said, you'll never see me here again. Oh. Yeah. Because I exactly that. How can you be Christian? Yeah. Only God is the instructor of who's going to go to heaven and hell. Yeah. So, you know, so I left and whatever. So he struggled with that for our whole marriage mm. because that was what he grew up with and what he knew. So, and all the time that we were married and through the ups and downs of life, you know, we, he lost a job. I lost a job, um, mm. you know, life and things happen. Yeah, things he happen. would always watch my stance. Yeah. And my, you know, I, I would say my favorite chapter in the whole Bible is Hebrews 11. That's the faith. The chapter. faith yeah. And he would watch that. Yeah. And he would say, how do you, why do you believe? How do you believe? How are you certain and he was asking me all the right questions all those years you know mm. so when he passed away and i give more detail in the book about all those details yeah yeah um two weeks before he passed away he dedicated his life to the lord and and um so when he did die mm. i don't want to say that it was easy because it no. wasn't but the assurance that I had that I knew where he was. Yes. And the fact that God somehow knew that I would be able to handle it. And he had been preparing me mm. my whole life mm. for that moment. Right. And the interesting thing was, and this is where faith walks in. And this is what I want to encourage people with is when you have faith, we grow a little bit at a time. Yeah. We don't wake up and go, okay, I believe in God. That's it. 
Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a working process. Yeah. It's a moment by moment thing. Mm-hmm. And so by the time my husband had passed away, God had developed such so much of himself within me yeah. that I I knew. And and again, it was not easy because again, I went through why God? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have a husband to raise my three sons. Why didn't you give me daughters? Because I'm a girl and I know what girls go through. Those kind of normal questions are what I gave God, you know. Mm-hmm. But he gave me the strength. Now, again, not to say I, there were many a nights I was exhausted. My mind was overwhelmed. And I would go to my pillow and soak it with tears. Yeah. Because so, yeah. you know, you're human. <laughs> humanity yeah Yeah. so but i will say that god was just so amazing through that grieving period with my husband and he would bring me back to moments in time Mm. and he would say do you remember when Mm. you know and it was a thought it was a thought Mm. in my head something Mm. i'd forgotten do you remember that moment and I'd be like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot about it. He'd be like, do you understand now how I connect the dots? Yeah. And bring you through to where you are today. Mm. And I went, oh, okay, God. All right. Mm. I won't question you anymore. At least not till tomorrow. Uh, and- <laughs> tomorrow we start again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think, again, we have to realize, we have to give ourselves grace to know we can trust in what we trust in. But we're still going to question, we're going to fail, we're going to doubt. Um, Mm -hmm. The the thing is not to get stuck there. Don't, don't, you know, mentally, emotionally, uh, we're, we have those feelings, but we can't get stuck there. We have to address it and come out of it. And then if we have faith and we walk into the faith and saying, oh God, help me understand Mm. this, bring the Mm. right people into our lives to help me walk this walk out. Mm-hmm. and and do life yeah. the best i can mm, mm, mm. yeah wow you're a strong woman of faith i must say uh, well that's what everyone tells me <laughs> yeah you are <laughs> wow wow how old were your boys yeah. at the time when it all this happened uh they were nine ten and twelve oh so young yeah so young yeah, that was tough. And, and you know what? And I just thank God every day that, you know, they did the normal boy things and whatever, but they never gave me trouble. And they could have very well have gotten angry and gone into bad places in mm-hmm. today's world. Yeah. In society today. But mm-hmm. you know what? Again, I had a really good neighborhood. Um, the kids were in sports. We were involved at church. We had a really great school district. So mm-hmm. between all of that, um, and I was an active mom. I was in the school. The principals knew me. The teachers knew me. I went okay. to the open houses. and mm-hmm. So I was very interactive with their mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I did it. I look back now and go, how in the world did I juggle all of that? All that, yeah. All of it. You know, I kept it going. I went to school. Then I then was I was working full time and then having a house and two dogs and a cat and everything and three sons. Along with life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Having to deal with your own feelings and the feelings of the boys as well. I'm sure they had questions, you know. I Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, and I was just talking to our youth pastor. Um he came our youth pastor came to the church the same year my husband died like mm. four months earlier right and i was just talking to a friend and i said i remember when we were going to bring him on and the, the church had asked for financial commitment to bring mm-hmm. him on so that we had enough money to pay for his yeah. salary because mm-hmm. we didn't have enough at the time and i remember feeling a quickening in my spirit that we needed him and i didn't know what it was i just mm. knew that yes i will give support my husband, now, my husband was still living at that point. At that time, And yeah. he was not a believer in tithing. He didn't believe in giving money to the church. He was like, money, the church just wants money. And I'm like, well, how do you think they pay the bills? Yeah. You know? 
out of the support from the congregation. You mm-hmm. know, they we want electric, we want the water to run and everything. You know. Yes. So, <laughs> so I I did a couple I, I'm a photographer and I babysat. So I had um at the time I was doing some side jobs that I got paid cash for. Mm-hmm. So in that money I that's what I, I used to made a commitment financially to bring this pastor on yeah and then yeah to the church and so without my so my husband not to be sneaky or anything but I thought well Lord I better just do this because I feel like I've got to be committed to this Mm. and I didn't understand it till after my husband passed away because he ended up becoming more of a mentor and an older brother to them boys yeah and even yeah to the boys and and eventually I ended up working at the church and there was at one point when they were old enough to join the high school group, he had said to me, he said, Donna, he said, if the boys come to me and want to talk to me about you or life or mm-hmm. whatever, yeah. you know, I'm going to keep that confidential and I'm not yeah. going to tell you. And I'm like, <laughs> I I get it, you know, because he knows me. He knows I'm their mother, and I'm going to be involved. You want to know? I said, yes. I, I, said, I know the kids. Yeah, I want to know, but you know what? I said I would rather have them talk to you yeah. and keep it confidential. Mm-hmm. And he said, and he told me, he said, of course, if there's anything bad, I yeah. will tell you. Mm-hmm. If it's just, I want them to be able to feel comfortable releasing and talking about whatever is yeah. paying them. Yeah. And I'm really grateful for that. That. And I see again, that was one of those God moments that um, he was brought into the church for such a time as that, that my boys were, and they loved him like an older brother Mm -hmm. and that they would go in and they would talk to him. And, Mm. you know, and I I still don't know any conversations, you know, but I think that was a saving grace that kept them out of trouble, that, um, that kept them safe and secure. And I'm grateful for that. You know, it's, we have to put things when life is difficult, like what I've gone through, Mm -hmm. I had to, my, in my mind, I had to put it into perspective and I had to see things for this bad thing happened, but these good things were in place. Like to the youth pastor being there for my kids from a man's point of view. Yes. They needed yeah. that. They, yeah. I knew enough to know they needed a guy's perspective yeah. that I cannot give them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so how they loved him and cared for him and he did the same. Those were the kind of moments that I just knew I'm standing on faith yes. in faith and knowing that God's got this mm-hmm. no matter how hard it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what got me through those yeah. kind of moments. God went ahead of you, you know? Yeah. 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 I made a way. <laughs> made a way. Yeah. 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 Wow. So what would you say? Because I know there are women who will be listening or watching this and be like, oh, you know, what would you say to someone going through some, or who, who may have gone through something similar, you know, something yeah. to encourage them really? Yeah. Um, a couple of things I would say, you know, Give yourself, uh, give yourself grace, give yourself time, Mm -hmm. Um, listen to your body and your mind. If you need to go to a counselor, find one that works for you. Yeah. You know, if one doesn't work and you need somebody else, go find somebody else. And I know Mm -hmm. in today's world in America, insurance is kind of wonky out here. It's just, Mm. it's goofy. So sometimes it's regulated too much. Really? That you just can't go find the right yeah it's not, oh, not a good wow. place with that. okay but um but if you can't get a good counselor find find a trustworthy person a mother a neighbor a friend mm-hmm. somebody not everybody one mm-hmm. or two people that can be a confidant yeah that can listen that you could pour your heart out to mm-hmm. i was really blessed that i had three women in my life that i could just cry I could say I'm angry. I could, whatever my emotions were, I could get it out without them judging me, Mm -hmm, without mm -hmm. them trying to fix it, Mm -hmm. without them, um, you know, feeling like, oh, I can't deal with this. You know, you've got to find a secure woman Mm -hmm. that will be able to handle that and just let you do what you got to do. Yeah. That's super important because Mm -hmm. if you hold it in, 
uh, there's there, um, and you probably know more about this than I, but stress is the biggest issue that we have today. And the more we hold in, the more that stress eats up in our life and our organs and our heart and high blood pressure and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And we've got to release it. Yeah. Exercising, eating right, mm -hmm. drop, you know, I mean, those so, so, so I learned that much too late. You know, drop the sugars, drop the, um, anything bad, you know, sometimes the dairy, too much dairy sets mm. you off, you know, so eating right is really a good thing, exercising, getting out, giving yourself permission to even just go for a walk, go sit in the park, if you don't have the finances, mm -hmm. go grab a cup of coffee, treat yourself once in a yeah. while, Yeah, you know, you better find that balance, um, because life is hard, you know, and then of course, I, for, I believe, immensely that you know having faith is the ultimate mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. praying and even when you we can't pray again just going god i can't i have no words because mm -hmm. he already knows mm -hmm. he already knows everything so yeah um you know getting into the bible or i i found a couple of good authors um women who, who had gone through grief um, losing their husband or a child. And mm. I found some of those books were very helpful. Helpful. Mm. Helpful to know that my thoughts were like, oh, that's normal. They were okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes we think things that are like, you know, like, is it, what did I do? Did I do this that made the baby meet the mm. baby to die? You start, and the devil wants to play tricks with us. Yeah. Make mind. you blame yourself. Yeah. Yes. So realizing when you hear other people's stories that it helps you realize I can breathe. I, I, I'm not, this is not abnormal. I'm, I'm thinking and going through things that, okay, I can get through this. Yeah. And, yeah. and when I went through my, the deaths, we didn't have technology. Whereas mm. today we've got the YouTube and the podcast and everything, <laughs> everything. Whereas before we, and, and grief wasn't talked about that much no. 30, 20 and 30 years ago. Mm. It's still difficult for people um, to go through. And one of my biggest things, what I want to do next, now that I've got this book going on, uh, now that I've got it completed, my next, uh, I want to be mentoring people, people, to teach people how to help people go through grieving yeah i was going to ask you what's the next thing for you yeah we are already answering it so yeah <laughs> yeah i have just such a passion to help people learn about grief how to handle grief mm -hmm. and how our loved ones can respond to what we're going through mm. there is no cookie cutty cutter answer no. Grief is as unique as our fingerprint. Yeah, yeah. So we cannot ever, we shouldn't compare our lives to anybody else anyway. Mm -hmm. Never, never, never. Mm -hmm. But when we're going through grief, there is no one path. No. Because it depends on your relationship with the person that is passed on. Yeah. You know, I had two babies and both of them were so different mm -hmm. in my emotions and my thought process. Mm -hmm. Much different, which is pretty amazing. You know, same husband, same everything, but I mentally handled them differently. Very yeah. yeah. So we have to understand that every grief, you know, five women could have their mothers pass away, but the dynamics of their grieving are going to be different. Yes, yes. And that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm kind of working on right now a mentoring mm. series of helping people. Um, and I'm kind of fine. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the research now how to do that, put that yeah. together. Yeah. 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 Wow. Your experience would come in handy because you've been through it, you know, yeah. so you'd have compassion, you know, yeah. that's something mm -hmm. that would help a lot, you know, yeah. in this process. That's awesome. You know, not what you've been through, but talking to you has been so awesome. You know, I've learned a lot about faith, and yeah. trusting God, the importance yeah. of holding on and leaning into God, yeah. you know, to help us go through situations, you know, that's right. very important. Yeah. Yeah. So what else would you like us to know about you before we round up? What else would you like to say? Uh, well, I hope, I hope people will go. I've got that copy of the book right here. It's real pretty. Oh, it's that's a, a lovely color. color. 
thank you. Um, I'm a photographer, so I designed the cover. Oh, wow. So mm. um, grab the book. It's, and I will say it's an easy read. I would mm-hmm. love, I think if you need encouragement, you're going through, it touches so many dynamics, not just mm-hmm. death, but prodigal, um, prodigals, uh, relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, it talks about my relationship with my parents, which was a little strained. It talks about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it's an easy read. Everyone says they've read it in a couple of hours. But you really? The whole read. book? The whole book, yeah. It's, wow. I, I wanted it to be an easy read. That was my prayer, too, that people would be able to I didn't want people to get stuck and put it down and forget about mm-hmm, it. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wanted them to be drawn in and, and you can check out the, the reviews. People have just been blessing me with wonderful reviews on the book, but I just think it's, it'll be an encouragement for life. Yeah. And, and many yeah. different ways. And, um, and I covet prayers that as I walk into this next, um, this next stage step of, health, of your life. Yeah. Your yeah. Head, stage and and path that God's taking me to I don't have all the answers of how that's going to look but um, Mm -hmm. I'm walking through it and um, you can visit me at my author page DL Rudd on Facebook Mm -hmm. and um, yeah prayers are always welcome Mm. yeah it's a book of hope I'm sure so many people will find hope you know yeah from reading that book so you you've given us um, where we can find it do you have a website I do um, it's www.words-by-design.com. Okay. So it's on Amazon. Is, do you have a um, Kindle format? Is it in Kindle as well? I do. Yep. Sure Awesome. Do. Yeah. So you can mm-hmm. download it onto your yes. laptop or anything yep. like that. Okay. Yep. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. It's been so great talking with you this the afternoon, morning, or where, yeah, whatever yes. time it is where you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this evening here. You know, I've learned a lot from you, and I'm sure many Thank women you. will be encouraged I hope so. I by hope listening so. to this story. Yes, definitely. And please send me your social media handles, everything, okay. and I'll put it in the description box for other women okay. to click on. Yeah, sure. and get in touch with you and buy your book okay. if they need to. Awesome. Thank All you right. so Thank much, you. Donna. <laughs> Blessings to you and the the people that are listening, I just will be praying that uh, people will just be encouraged and, and blessed, you know, and, and what you're doing too, you know, may God richly bless your podcast and, and your outreach too. Thank you so Thank much, you. Donna. I really appreciate that. And to yes. you as well. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure we'll connect sometime to do other things. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right, then you take yes. care and stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs>